So you want to lose weight on the Weight Watchers plan without ever going hungry? Well, I'm going to share with you the zero pointed food list. Hi guys, thanks for joining me here today on this video. I love the Weight Watchers plan and I, I really do. And because of the Weight Watchers plan and programs, I have lost to date 114 pounds. Weight Watchers has over 200 zero pointed foods and I'm going to in this video explain to you what they are, explain the categories and the groups of foods in those categories and I'm going to also share with you how you can use those zero pointed foods to eat till you are completely satisfied and not ever feel restricted on the plan. So guys go get yourself a cup of tea, make yourself really nice and comfy and let's get going. So guys, Weight Watchers has nine categories of food that are zero pointed. And I'm gonna run through these for you. I'm gonna tell you what the categories are and then we're gonna go and explore the some of the actual foods in those categories. So the nine categories on their standard plan is non-starchy veg, eggs, fish and shellfish, they also have poultry, tofu and tempeh, corn and popcorn, beans, peas and lentils. They also have fruit and fat-free yogurt and cottage cheese. So those are the nine categories on the standard plan. If you are like me on the diabetic plan, then fruit, yogurt and, and cottage cheese is pointed. Okay, those are pointed. So on the diabetic plan, you have seven categories of zero pointed foods. But if you're on the standard plan, then you have nine. And Weight Watchers, I just want to put a little point here. Weight Watchers say that um, if you are type 2 diabetic then it is recommended that you do the diabetic plan because that way it, it guides you to making those choices to help you keep your blood glucose level in control. If you are pre-diabetic or you are not diabetic then it is recommended to do the standard plan. So I just wanted to throw that in there. So why have the, the foods that are zero been chosen as zero, you may ask? Well, they're classed as zero because Weight Watchers say that these are foods that are packed with vitamins, minerals, fibre and are protein dense. And these everyday foods can really help to make you feel full and feel satisfied and therefore that means that you're less likely to be hungry but also you can then use your points your daily points budget for foods that you absolutely love and that you could um, lean into so that means that you're more likely to make uh, the plan a healthy lifestyle. You may also be asking, well, if that's the case, don't these foods have calories? Yes, they have calories. But the idea is if we take chicken breast, for example, um, if you've got a choice of having chicken breast over a pack of chocolate biscuits, it's easy to eat six chocolate biscuits in one go but it's not so easy to eat six chicken breasts. And that is because the chicken breasts are gonna, they're full of protein, you're gonna feel fuller, it's gonna make you feel satisfied, whereas the chocolate biscuits, they just slide down really, really easily. So that's why they have been classed as zeros, the foods that I'm gonna share with you in a moment because you're less likely to overeat on them. So Weight Watchers say 
each food in your normal portion. So just because something is zero doesn't mean you should overeat on it. So for example, if you normally have two eggs in a, on a morning or throughout the day, then stick with that. Don't think, oh, eggs are zero, so I'm just going to have a free-for-all. I'm going to have a pack of six. Or just because chicken is zero, then I'm going to eat like six chicken breasts. Um, you still have to eat foods in moderation and still manage the portions. But they're zero because it's going to leave you fuller for longer. And of course, all of those nutrients that are in there. So how did Weight Watchers come up with this list? Well, on their website, they say that these foods that we're going to explore in a moment um, have been recommended by the national and international nutrition guidelines. And this also includes guidance from the World Health Organization. And this is, they say, is um, to help people enjoy their food but also get all the nutrients and minerals that they need to make the foods that they choose part of a healthy lifestyle. So the great thing about the zero pointed foods that I absolutely love is that it helps to make the plan really livable and really flexible and it means that I can enjoy, if I go out for a meal, like yesterday we were out for a meal, we went for an Indian, we had like, you know, all the, everything that came with it, the pakoras that were fried, the naan breads, um, we had it, the alcohol as well that came with it. It means that I could go out and enjoy that meal and then balance the rest of the day out with my zero pointed foods and really lean into them. So let's delve a bit deeper into these categories and talk about the type of foods that are in these zero pointed categories. So let's get started with the non-starchy veg. Well, there is absolutely loads and loads and loads of foods within the, this category of non-starchy veg. And I'm just gonna run through a couple of, a couple of them. There's things like aubergines, if I'm looking down, that's because I'm reading it off my iPad, guys. And um, we've got aubergines, asparagus, bean sprouts, beetroot, um, broad brains, broccoli, capers and carrots. We've got courgettes and cucumbers and fennel. We've got leeks and lemongrass. We've got lettuce. We've got pak choy and onions. Uh, we've got shallots and spinach tomatoes and turnips there's just loads absolutely loads so in total there is over 70 foods within the category of non-starchy veggies a lot of them are everyday foods that we know and love but there's also a few that that are probably not as well known um such as chicory We've got uh, duddy or calabash. We've got um, gourd, and also known as corella. We've got um, he, uh, a Mexican turnip, uh, jicama. We've got kohlrabi, uh, muli, okras, um, palm of hearts. Samphire, there's lots and lots of things that I've never even heard of myself. Um, so the great thing is we've got all the foods that we know, but also foods that perhaps we don't know. So maybe this is a great opportunity to explore those foods and to try them and uh, experiment and get them into our meal plans. So lots and lots of foods there within the non-starchy category. Now I'm gonna jump over to eggs. So eggs is a really good food. So within the category of eggs, we've got duck eggs, uh, egg whites, egg yolks, goose eggs, and quail eggs. So two medium, Quail eggs equates to one portion. 
and again eggs are one of those foods that certainly for me is essential have them on their own but also incorporate them into my cooking now i'm going to come to the category of fish and shellfish again there's lots there we've got anchovies uh, bassa bream caviar clams cod coli crayfish we've got halibut uh, kippers mackerel mussels we've got salmon pink salmon uh, police red mullet um, we've got shrimps and smoked cod sprats I love sprats I haven't had sprats for years love sprats we've got trout and tilapia whelks and whiting and winkles there's just so many and uh, there is over 69 different types of fish and shellfish in the zero point category for fish uh, again lots that we we know of but maybe a few unusual ones such as caviar if you can afford it get a bit of caviar in there guys there's also um frog legs yeah if you you know fancy a bit of ooh la la and you're in france or you can get them frog legs is there we've got grouper i've never heard of grouper and hokey never heard of that there's jellied eels and john dory some new ones there for me how about a bit of octopus yeah or orange roughly never heard of that so that's one for me to explore and uh, there's um all oh, things like scallops and what else is unusual or maybe some snails do you fancy some snails i did have snails once i went to a french restaurant and i had snails and i have to admit they were really tasty yeah just the, i thought of them is like no but these were really really good um turbot whelks winkles all of these things some things that we know and love and also some unusual things is there on the zero pointed list for um fish and shellfish so maybe again another category to explore so now we're going to look at the category of poultry the chicken and turkey breast so just to uh, let you know here guys when weight watchers say turkey breast or chicken breast it is without the skin because that's the leanest part of the chicken if you cook it with the skin on you do have to point it it will have points because it will have absorbed the fat from the, the skin so we're talking skinless cooked without the skin you can of course eat it with the skin and cook it with the skin but of course it's pointed so um in this category what is zero is skinless chicken and turkey breast we've also got chicken breast mince and there is a difference because if you go for um say mince turkey or um chicken mince and it's the thigh or other parts of the the poultry then it's pointed so do ensure that it is chicken breast or turkey breast that is minced and that will be zero but also is wafer thin chicken as well so um and also chicken breast slices you know you can get the wafer thin ones those are zero okay our next category is beans peas and lentils and in these categories again there's quite a few things we've got dookie beans black beans black beluga beans you've got black eyed beans that are cooked bortolotti beans butter beans cannellini chickpeas edamame beans flag oh flagolette not heard of that one flagolette beans green or brown lentils cooked split peas it goes on and on gunga beans haricot peas regular peas petit pois is also uh, zero pre lentils which are dried soya beans yellow split peas all of these things are zero and there's a few more in there guys so do jump in and have a little look so 
brilliant and these are and i'm going to show, share with you in a moment how we can incorporate these into our meals okay the next category we've got is tofu and tempeh so again if you are vegan or vegetarian the plan will absolutely work for you using both the tofu and the tempeh and also those beans and peas and legumes and also the veg uh, all those non-starchy veggies um so under the category of tofu and tempeh i'll just read what is included a zero it's japanese style silken tofu we've got plain textured soy protein plain tofu corn fillets corn mints uh, corn pieces corn slices smoked tofu and tempeh and those are classed as zero we've also got corn and popcorn as a zero food list category and in this is corn on the cob we've got plain popcorn and that is no added oil or flavoring so usually this is referring to you know if you go to the cinema and you can just get plain popcorn that'll be zero but if you get it that has got any butter or any flavorings on it's not going to be zero but also included is popcorn kernels. So if you do want to buy a bag, and you know those popcorn kernels, they last for ages, um, and it's really really affordable. Um, if you get buy the kernels and pop the popcorn yourself, that is zero. And sweet corn, a tablespoon of sweet corn is zero. If you have more than a tablespoon, do you will need to point it, but a tablespoon is um zero so those seven categories are included for people on the standard plan but also if you're on the diabetic plan too now if you're on the standard plan these two categories are also included as zero but if you're on the diabetic plan they are not zero for you so these two categories I'm going to come to in a minute and the first one is fruits so if you're on the standard plan your fruits will be zero again there's quite a lot here we've got apples and apricots blueberries and cranberries we've got fig and guava oh I love a bit of guava um kiwi fruit mangoes mangosteen um plums and pomegranates we've got shaman fruit satsumas and oranges watermelons prickly pears all of those are zero in total there's 58 fruits that are classed as zero and again lots that we everyday fruit that we know we love we enjoy but there's a few unusual ones so there's some unusual ones here too such as breadfruit a quarter of a medium breadfruit is zero uh, we've got carambola, which is star fruit. I've had star fruit before. It's absolutely delicious. Um, and I've also had breadfruit as well. That is lovely roasted. Um, you've got durian. Never heard of durian myself. Um, so that's one for me to explore. We've got jackfruit. Again, a, a quite popular one now, especially in vegan cooking and vegetarian cooking. We've got quamquats. Uh, Logan berries, lychees. Oh, I love a lychee. Oh, they're so sweet and delicious. You've got mangosteen or pawpaw. Um, we've got now this I've never heard of this thistleis, which is Cape gooseberries. Never heard of that one. Uh, pomelo. I'm just wondering if that's a type of cherry. I'm not sure, but there we go. We've got quince as well. Um, there's Sharon fruit, persimmons, um, yeah, so a few unusual ones there. So all of those are zero if you're on the standard plan. If you are on the diabetic plan, then fruit is pointed. And then the last category is your yogurt and your cottage cheese. So uh, we've got a couple of things on this list we've got the zero percent natural greek yogurt fat-free natural cottage cheese fat-free natural fromage free 
fat-free natural yogurt, fat-free plain goat milk yogurt, fat-free plain skier yogurt, plain soya yogurt and quark which is fat-free and plain. So those are on the zero pointed list. If you are on the standard plan, if you are on the diabetic plan, you do have to point those. And the way you'll know is because if you're on the diabetic plan and you go in and you're searching for, say, a banana or an apple or um, fat free yogurt it will come up with a points value so that might be for one person and the next person who's on the standard plan when they search for that it'll be zero and that's how you know which plan you're on well that's one way there's other ways such as going into your app and looking at your settings and you can see whether you're on the diabetic plan or not so guys, that is just a really quick run through of your zero pointed foods on Weight Watchers. So there is over 200 zero pointed foods. And on my journey, I've absolutely leaned into those zero pointed foods. And it's really made the difference for me on my journey. I've never once been hungry. Of There's always something that I could eat. So I'm going to give you three tips, three of my top tips to incorporate those zero pointed meals into your day. So my first tip is create a base, create a baseline. And when you're thinking about building a meal or planning for your day or your week, start with the zero pointed foods. Start with if you go in for the chicken or the turkey, start with that or start with some veggies or start with the lentils or start with the tofu or the tempeh. Start with your zero pointed foods and build your meals around that. Um, and that way, you know that you one, you get in the fiber and you get in the, um, the protein in. You're starting from a base of zero and then you're building your meals around that. So, for example, to give you an example, I might start with um, chicken mince, which is zero, to make a spaghetti bolognese. So, I will use my onions to cook down my onions chop and fry my onions, that's zero, add in some garlic, that's zero, then fry in my chicken breast mince, that's zero. And then I might add in some tomatoes, some fresh or tinned tomatoes, that's zero. And then on top of that, add in some passata, that's zero. So straight away, I've got a bulk of food, that is zero. And then I might want to add in some pasta. So that the pasta is not zero. So that's where I'm gonna weigh and point my pasta. And once that's cooked, I'm gonna stir that all in. And then I might wanna to top that off with some cheese. My cheese is not, say it's gonna be, say, um, mature cheddar. That's not zero, so that's where I'm going to be using my points and portioning it out to add. So can you see I've built up my meal from my zero base to create a meal with my pasta and my cheese that's the only thing that's pointed. So more than 50% of my meals is zero. It might even be I want to now do a Sunday roast. So again, I'm going to start with my chicken, my chicken breast, which is zero. Going to roast that or maybe pop that in the air fryer. I'm going to put some seasonings on that and that's going to be zero as long as there's no oil in that. And um, things like salt, pepper, paprika, curry powder, rosemary, and herbs, things like that are all going to be zero. So I'm going to roast, put that in the oven, roast that or put that in the air fryer. And that's my protein source. And then I'm going to build it up with some vegetables. So I might get in some broccoli. I might get in some cauliflower. Um, maybe even 
a little bit of courgette or some peas on my plate got my veggies maybe some carrots in there to add color got a good plate full of veggies so straight away my my chicken is zero my veggie selection or it might even be a salad is going to be zero and then i might think i'm going to add some potatoes in now my potatoes are not zero so i'm going to have to point those and use my points out of my daily budget so i'm going to peel and boil some potatoes i might even want to roast them off with a little bit of oil so i'm going to add use the points um maybe a teaspoon of oil which i'm going to point to uh, roast my potatoes in and then i'm gonna maybe want a yorkshire yorkshire pudding now a yorkshire pudding again it's not zero so i'm using my points from my daily budget for that and then i'm gonna want a bit of gravy now again gravy is not zero so i'm gonna be using the points my part of my points for that so i'm gonna have a meal now which has got uh my roast chicken and a lot of veggies or a salad all of that is zero so the bulk of that meal is now zero and then i'm going to add in the potatoes yorkshire pudding and also some gravy and that's not zero so again 50 percent of that meal is zero so i hope you can start to see how by starting with those zeros you're going to get yourself a healthy well balanced and satisfying meal so starting with the zeros is a great way to really manage your points and to stretch your points for the day so once you've got your meal idea uh, and you've created that base you can now pump it up level it up as I say, with all of those additional things that you want. Um, and that's really going to add variety. It's going to add flavour. It's going to add colour and it's going to add interest. And it's going to make your meal more satisfying. But start with that zero base first. And then use your zero pointed foods for those snacks in between as well. Now, yes, you can use your points for those snacks. But if you're thinking about a healthy lifestyle and healthy eating, again, start with those zeros. You can use those veggies to make dips and crudités. You could lean in on those popcorn kernels to pop your own popcorn. Um, you could even lean in on things like your chicken to create chicken strips. Um, to slice them up so you could just munch on them throughout the day there's so many different things you could do um in the ww app you could also search there's got hundreds and hundreds of recipes that are zero so you could type zero points in uh do a quick search on the app and if you really enjoy cooking it'll help you to find all those low pointed meals and snacks that you can lean into in the app you could also search by category you could type in in the recipe section snacks and it'll come up with snack ideas you could type in lunch breakfast dinner and again it'll come up with all of those ideas and that can really help you to start seeing how you can use those zeros to build your meals. I also just want to share with you guys quickly, um, Weight Watchers no longer produces their own cookbooks. Well, they haven't produced a cookbook, you know, this year. And in the past, they've always created cookbooks. And I've got a big collection of their cookbooks. And some of these, this is a really old one. This is from a few years ago, their Flex Plan. Um, I've got this one as well. Um, and I've also got their Freestyle Cookbook. I've got absolutely loads. At the back of the kitchen, I've just got maybe about 30 different cookbooks. A lot of these cookbooks, you can pick up in charity shops um here in the uk or even online on ebay and amazon and if i see a cookbook that i don't have 
I get it, I get it, because even though Weight Watchers isn't using um, the points system in these cookbooks, in this book it was uh, the blue plan, and in some of them I just quickly want to show you, oh, something like this, this is when we had my way, and it was the three different coloured plans, some of them are really old, this one is flex, um, and this was smart points. If you, like me, like to look through a cookbook, pick them up if you see them, because the recipes are still very valid. So what I like to do, so this one is flex, this is quite an old recipe. I would look through, and if, say, I wanted to make that, I would just type in Mediterranean omelette into the app, and if this recipe is still there it will come up and it'll give you the points value for it if it's not in the app if this title isn't in the app the app will throw up very similar recipes to this as well which you can absolutely point and use but if all else fails, if you find a really, really, really old cookbook, say from the days of one, two, three success, which was the plan that I joined 38 years ago when I originally joined Weight Watchers, even if that is not in the app, then what you can do is enter the ingredients into the app by using the create a recipe function and the app will create it for you and give you the points value. So um, that's a little tip for you um, on any cookbook from Weight Watchers. Um, there is a very, very good chance that the recipes are still in the app. Um, so yeah, you could still search for them, but you could use them anyway. Um, so, and the, the other little tip is, any cookbook that you've got, and I've got loads, I've got all the pinch and on ones, I've got um, Mary Berries, I've, I've just got absolutely loads um, of different cookbooks. You can take any of those recipes and add it to your app by using the Create a Recipe feature, and it'll point it for you, it'll save it there for you. So, a little, little tip for you there, guys. So guys, I hope you found that, that useful. I hope you found that helpful. Um, just exploring the zero pointed food categories and um, exploring how to start building meals from those. Um, if you love cooking from recipes, then again, use the features in the app to help you create those recipes. But if, like me, you love being intuitive in your cooking style, then, you know, again, it doesn't have to be fancy. Your meals don't have to be fancy. You don't have to follow a recipe as such. It doesn't have to be a wonderful creation. It's often the simplest things that uh, are great. So, guys, just a little point that I wanted to just share with you is Weight Watchers refer to those categories of food as zero and not free. And they refer to them as zero just as that reminder that there is calories in those foods. But to build them into the plan, they're zero for those reasons I mentioned earlier, which is that um, they're recommended by the uh, World Health Organization and, and those bodies um, and as part of a healthier lifestyle. And we can eat them and enjoy them, but because of the nature of those foods, we're much likely to eat less of those than other types of food. So we're gonna eat maybe one portion of chicken breast rather than you know whereas it's easy to eat half a packet of biscuits so that's why weight watchers refer to them as zero uh so guys what are your favorite zero foods drop a comment below and let me know what's your favorite and how do you use them i absolutely love to make soups 
so I use my veggies a lot um, and I just put them in my soup maker just get a load of veggies fresh or frozen and and in fact I tend to use more frozen because it just means I can use what I want with, without having the waste and so you make soups a lot with those um, and I love chicken I really find so many different ways to to use chicken and it keeps me fuller for longer and in fact the other day I had um, I had a roast chicken dinner and with veggies and that was left over and I put that into a into my soup maker with some water and a stock cube and it turned it into the most delicious thick hearty and warming chicken soup it was delicious so yeah so many ways to use those um to use those zero pointed foods and eggs i love eggs i've always got eggs boiled up in the fridge so i can munch on them um, but also they're fantastic for incorporating in, in different types of food if you're making quiches and and omelets uh, even if you're doing pies and cakes they're essential essential so there's just so many things to do with those zeros so guys don't ever don't ever feel that you're going to go hungry on Weight Watchers. Um, you will if you don't use your zero-pointed foods because most people's um, zero daily budget, most people's daily budget um, is limited and isn't going to go that far. But leaning in on those zeros. So guys, before I finish off, just a couple of things that I know that I've often asked in the past is how much zero foods can I eat? And the quest, the answer that came back to me is that whilst there's no minimum and there's no limit, you can eat as many as you want. We still have to manage those portions. We still have to have control over those zero pointed foods that we eat. Because if we're normally eating, you know, one chicken breast, and we end up eating three, that's triple the calories, we're gonna gain weight. So we still need to manage those. So I think what I've learned over time is really to listen in to my body and listening to these cues and recognizing when I'm full and drawing that line and stopping there. And I know some people within my weight loss community will still track those zero pointed foods. Uh, Weight Watchers say that you don't have to track them if you don't want to. Um, as long as you're managing those portions and you're eating a sensible quantity that is going to keep you satisfied. Um, but some people feel, no, I want to track them and I want to keep control of them. So, yeah, I, I would say what I've learned over time is eat till you're satisfied. Um, another question that um, I asked when I joined is... If the zero pointed foods are so good, can I, surely I will just lose weight if I just eat zero pointed foods. And what I came to realize is you could absolutely do that, but for me, it's not sustainable. It, it just wasn't sustainable because there are things that I love you know, I do enjoy a little piece of chocolate. I love my toffees. I do enjoy a bag of crisps. I do enjoy potatoes and gravy and Yorkshire pudding. And all of those things are pointed. So whilst zeros are a good base and it's fine to have a couple of zero or low pointed meals, Thinking long term, for me, it was just not sustainable to think that I could just live my life just on zero pointed foods. So how I have lost my weight is leaning into those zeros quite heavily and then using my points for all the little extras that I love. So, yeah, you know, don't get into the mindset of um living on zero pointed foods because you're gonna get bored it's not sustainable 
and then that can really affect the mindset but absolutely start your meals by building on those so guys i hope you found that was of value to you um do let me know do let me know um if this was of value and if it was give this video a thumbs up it really does make a difference to me um but drop in the comment box below what's your favorite zero foods what foods do you lean on what categories do you enjoy and make and use as part of your meals i'd love to know so guys and um, thank you so much for being with me if you want to know a little bit about my journey and also the foods that has helped me on my weight loss to losing 114 pounds then check out this video that's coming up right now okay guys i will see you very soon take care now bye